Hello, everybody. KWXY.com plays music heard throughout the world. And in the Coachella Valley, it has been, uh, I won't say voted, but it won the ratings to be the area's number one AM station, with the ratings going right through the roof. One of the reasons for the station's long-standing popularity is a program called Don's On. The Grammy winner plays the Grammy winners. So who is Don Zahn, and what about the Grammys he won? Well, you're going to meet Don Wardell in just a few seconds, but first, this segment of Conversations with Gloria Greer is brought to you by the Camelot Theatres at 2300 Baristo Road in Palm Springs. And these are the theatres that consistently bring you the top films in contention for Academy Awards, as well as the world's finest art, foreign, independent, and documentary films. Currently playing at the Camelot, the Black Swan, starring Natalie Portman, Oscar front-runner for Best Actress in recent Golden Globe and Screen Actors Guild Best Actress winner. Also at the Camelot this week, I Love You, Philip Morris, and Another Year. And there's always fine food in the Camelot Cafe and cool, delicious drinks upstairs in the picturesque Cinnabar with tasty appetizers to add to your enjoyment. Okay, Don Wardell is host of Don's On, and he is a Grammy winner. Here's his Grammy. I never held a Grammy before. He is a Grammy winner. Um, well, we'll talk about it for what he won the Grammy. But so let's go back to your years at RCA, how you won this Grammy, and I know you've been nominated since. Uh-huh. Okay. Can we start there? And then I want to go oh, back to the war and oh, your absolutely. start on BBC. Thank you for inviting me to join you. It's, it's so nice. To, Thank you. We meet on the run all the time. That's and now, correct. Now we get to sit and talk. And I listen to you. I drive a lot. And you're on in my car. Thank you. Frequently. Well, RCA, it's the second oldest record company in America. The oldest is Columbia. Uh, RCA, of course, is the home of Nipper the Dog. Uh, uh, it, it's just, it's just a, a backbone of music. Yeah. And there was, in the, in the archives at RCA, uh, uh, masters by Tommy Dorsey and Frank Sinatra. They worked together. Sinatra was the vocalist with the band from 40 to 42. And there were 53 songs uh, in the archive, and they'd never been put together before, so uh, three of us did this, uh -huh. Ethel Gabriel, Alan Dell, and I, and it won in 1982 as the best historical album. How marvelous. That yeah. must have been a great thrill. And I, I don't know, maybe we should show it even again, because this is the Grammy that you won, yes. and you mentioned that the Grammys have changed. They've changed now. The horn is bigger. Yeah. The horn is more, more upright. The bass is now a, a black kind of level leak plastic and if you send your old Grammy in they'll send you a new one but I like this I'm attached to this I don't blame you and of course it's the one you won so yes. were you very excited yeah it all happens and people it, it, I have that experience now and it all happens in a flash I suppose. the the the, uh, the host says uh, who was the man on the laugh in who put his hand to his ear he was the Gary whatever he, he was the host yeah uh, and, and he started out by saying the Tommy and you know that that's it it's going to be the Tommy Dorsey Frank Sinatra session so at that moment you know did did they have as they I think do now nominations that there were four or five or three or how many five, and then I think. Yes. 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 Five, the five. So you knew you had a chance. Yes. And you were there. Yes. Oh, yeah. It was at the Shrine Auditorium. How and exciting. then suddenly you're, you're in a blaze of light and you go up and they give them to you. And then you walk out and you go into the press room yeah. where people bombard you. Uh, but it's a one I can remember it distinctly. I think I think anybody would be able to remember it. Of course, it would be one of the great memories. And then, as I said before, you were nominated again. And one of the nominations was for uh, digitizing Elvis Presley. Yes, I, I was very fortunate. Uh, at, I didn't know the Elvis family at all. Um, I went to RCA and he'd been dead for one year and there was mm -hmm. some kind of dispute between the record company and the estate. Yeah. So there were no Elvis releases. And then after about two or three years, they, whatever was going on, they patched it up. And they said, we'd like you to now prepare this for a digital release. So we put a team together and I spent a lot of time in Tupelo, Mississippi, where he was born. Mm -hmm. And I would urge anybody who is the least bit interested in Elvis, y yes, people go to Graceland, it's the second 
most visited home in America, it's the incredible. White House. Really. <laughs> but go take the, take the car and go down to Tupelo, and you'll, you'll understand more of Elvis's roots. He was born in the shotgun house, which is there in Elvis Presley Park, so-called because you can fire a shotgun through the front door and out, out of the back, you oh, know. Yeah. How interesting. And he had a twin brother. People don't yes. know this was Who still died, born. Right? Yes, yeah. Jesse Garin. And the people of Tupelo make you so welcome. And you really understand the Presley, the Presley family much more. They, they took a great chance. They left Tupelo and went to Memphis. And he was a truck driver for an electrical company and made a record for his mother. And, uh, that was the start? Yes, he made a record for Gladys for her birthday. And the lady in, the, in Sun Records where he did it, Marion, yeah. the secretary, told uh, Sam Phillips, the head of Sun, a guy came in today to make a record for his mother and you should really hear him sing. And so interesting. Well, it? when I went back, they, they invited me back, you know, the Elvis people, to, uh, it was the 40th anniversary of his return to Las Vegas. And I had oh. done all these celebrity interviews and Colonel Parker had flown me up there. Right. So they had me come and they had a big to-do on the anniversary of his death, a big show at the uh, Performing Arts Center mm -hmm. in, in, in Memphis, I guess, yeah. And uh, anyway, so, and I introduced it. So I got to go to Graceland and I saw Sun Records and it's, it, it's, it was just amazing to me because with all of the aura of, of Elvis Presley, I still didn't realize. I mean, on the way to the hotel, the, ca the, the, the driver of the car said, you know, he said, this is what's keeping the economy going. Uh huh. Okay, yeah. I didn't realize that. There are three people, yeah. Marilyn, James Dean, and Elvis, yeah. who are just legends yeah. from the 50s. Okay, now, you, you di had it digitized, and you were kind of ahead of the curve with that, weren't you? Uh, pretty much. Uh, we had an international team doing it. It's interesting how America doesn't treasure its past. I say this without being any snide remark at all, but it took two English guys and a Swede <laughs> to put this, the Elvis stuff together. And uh, we're such a, such a disposable society, aren't we? We just use things up and we don't, we don't look back. And we don't safe, safeguard historical no. places as we should. We're no. beginning to. We're beginning to. F and maybe because we're so new. Yes. Oh, yes. You know, our probably. history is so new next to. Very probably. You are an American citizen now, but yes. you were born in England. Yes. You're British by birth. Yes. And at 13, you went did a show on BBC. It's yeah, my, amazing. Yeah, my mother was a kind of um, a firebrand, uh -huh. and she sent me to um, to a friend of hers for some uh, elocution lessons, and um, this lady said, if you send him to me for a year, I will get him on the BBC, and she kept her word. And I was 13, and uh, it was a program called Children's Hour, which young people participated in. I was on it for years and years. How interesting. Now, did you uh, resent, or did you love it or at that age, or resent the time taken away from something else that you might have been doing? No, it was, it was really a highlight. Yeah. To, go, to go into those studios, and in those days, radio was king, and they had a team of writers who now I look up and Google, and I'm just, I see their pedigree, and I realize who you were rubbing shoulders with. Because it's theater of the mind radio, right. and uh, yeah. you have to have a little bit something up here. It's not thrown at you like television. That's true. So you, so you, but you're the, you sit go, there and your mind is working because you're visualizing what yeah, you're hearing. You'd go in the studio and there'd be half a car, and so you'd be required in the script to you're getting out of a car to your parents' home, whatever, and a man would stand there and slam the door. And all of the fascinating things for a kid to see. Right, right. And then I know you were in the Royal Air Force. Yes, I, I, I uh, was in the Air Force, and I, went, I was very fortunate. Because of what I had done at the BBC, they sent me to Paris, of all places. It's so, not bad. Not bad. <laughs> Before the Germans. Not bad. I remember the day I looked at the list, you know, people were crying because it said Aden and Cyprus and <laughs> all these places where England was interfering. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and I ran my finger down in there at Paris. Oh, really? Paris. It was, it was remarkable. Paris in the 50s was remarkable. So what did you do? I was at SHAPE, Supreme Headquarters Allied Powers Europe. Mm -hmm. And I really can't talk about it, but that's what I, oh, that's, yeah. I was there. Okay. But, uh, All right. I was there for nearly two years. Uh, well, that can't And be. an all-American office, let me add. That's where my love affair began. With, with America? Yes, because at the weekends I would go to people's homes and they'd have barbecues and throw horseshoes, things that I'd never... Never. And these were Americans who were stationed over there yes, at the time? Yes, absolutely. Uh -huh. yes. Yeah. Then how did you get to Luxembourg? Because I know later you were on radio there, and that's the largest radio station in Europe? Yes, it is. Uh -huh. uh, 
I, I got out of the Air Force and I went back to England and I couldn't get a job in radio and I worked for a municipal authority in the entertainment department. I mean, we all have to do things, right? Of course. You have to, the sun doesn't shine all the time. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, they wanted someone at Radio Luxembourg and I took an audition and I got it and I went, went out to live in Luxembourg, this tiny place, 999 square miles. And we had three jars in the kitchen. One had Luxembourg francs, one had French francs, and one had German marks. And on a Saturday, you would decide, where are we going shopping? Are we going to go to Germany, 20 minutes, Belgium, or France? That's good. Uh, it so, was remarkable. That, that's remarkable. a wonderful experience. Yes. And so then what brought you to the United States? Well, I, I was on the air one. I was at Luxembourg for nine years, and one year I was on, one, one night I was on the air and I just felt, oh, I've done enough of this. It was just like a, a flash, you know, yeah. this is enough, enough. So I saved a little bit of money and I went back to London and a friend of mine said to me, uh, her name was Sally, she said, uh, you have to meet Tettles. And I didn't know who Tettles was. And she said, you have, you have to. So she gave this dinner party and Tettles came and Tettles was Sir Edward Lewis, Ted Lewis. Oh, for heaven's sake. Yeah, and he was either her godfather or whatever, whatever, whatever. And he said to me after the dinner, come and see me at Decca tomorrow. And uh, that's how I joined the Decca Record Company. And then he sent me to America. And so you started with Decca before RCA. Yeah, exactly, yes. Now, Decca was also a tremendously yeah. big recording company. Yes. But of course, it doesn't exist, does it, anymore? Well, it, the catalog exists and the yeah. label exists. But, the whole, you know, there used to be 820 people at RCA Records mm -hmm. when, I, when I was there. Fascinating people, people who had been around at the birth of stereo and television and what have you. And now there's about 40 people run the whole thing. Yeah, and what, what actually are they doing with all this downloading and everything? Do you know? I mean, what happens to these record companies now? Just re-releases? Uh, well, no, some are active. Some are active, but the profits aren't there because at one time the record companies called all the shots. And of course. If you were on Columbia and you know, you sold a lot of records. Yeah. But uh, they have a lesser role. And also, it's kind of good for talent because talent can express themselves through mm -hmm. YouTube or whatever. Well, Jack Jones was recently on this show and he was so funny because he said, you know, today, he said, you produce your own. Mm -hmm. You produce your own recordings. And he said, probably, he said, so if you're, if you're producing and the producer or the owner of the company has to nominate you for uh, yes. <laughs> a Grammy. He said, I guess I have to nominate myself. I guess you do. And he said, if I win, I might have to make the Grammy. Oh, of course, he oh, was I don't, kidding, but I don't think so. I think no, it's gone to that. No, of course not. But, I, but, but, you know, that's Jack. I mean, RCA <laughs> Victor, we had our own chef. I mean, this was a high yeah, living. Sure. You, there's no need to go out in the snow. Yeah. You call down, and when are you coming to the dining room, and what did you want? I mean, that's inconceivable today, isn't it, that you would oh, yeah. have Certainly. a chef on staff? Now, who were you working with? What artists when you were there? At, oh, well, mostly Jefferson Airplane, who became the Starship, and Mr. Mister, and Kenny Rogers, and Diana Ross, some pretty, you know, luminary people. And Tim Rice and Andrew Lloyd Webber had a wonderful show in London called Chess. And we yes, did, I We remember. did a whole thing for that. Mm -hmm. It was a complete variety of... of I love being around variety rather than yeah. just rock and roll or middle of the road or whatever categories, you, you know, all the categories have changed now anyway, but I think it's so great in a big record company, you get to play and be with all kinds of people. But you know, talking about chess, that's how Elaine Page, yes. first lady of the London yes. Theatre, or yes. she was, musical theatre, and yes. she started with chess. Yes, she did. Um, you play, as I was telling you before we went on the air, all I have to do is turn on the radio or on my computer, KWXY. I know right away when I hear the music that it's you. Do you really? Oh, absolutely. Because of the uh, selections that you select <laughs> to play. Uh -huh. And uh, so even though you were with Jefferson Airplane, those people, you seem to have a great, great, great love of what we refer to now as the great American songbook. Absolutely. Sinatra, Ella Fitzgerald. Yes, Peggy Lee. Yeah, yeah. Shearing. 
and I can't leave out because you do play him a lot, Fred Astaire. <laughs> oh, I do. I, Fred Astaire had an, uh, made an extraordinary contribution. Uh, the, all the great people, the composers of the Great American Songbook, they all wrote for Astaire, the Gershwins and Cole Porter and Berlin, and they liked the way he delivered their songs. He's not an incredible singer, but he, no. what they liked was he didn't bring extra, uh, any extra filigree to this. Right. He, he sang it as they wrote it, and that's what they enjoyed about yeah. him. We're going to return to you in just oh. a few seconds, but first, Let's have these messages. Uh, uh, now, you, it is always announced that this, the music that you play is not necessarily from the archives of KWXY, but it's actually from your own collection. Yes, I've been fortunate. Um, this started at, uh, before KWXY changed hands, that uh, the, uh, the then owner, Glenn Barnett, let me play my own material mm -hmm. at the weekends. Yeah. And everything in the week. Well, is, you were on only Saturday and Sunday that's afternoon. Correct, that's and correct. then it went to AM and, and the supples own it and all of a sudden you're on every day which I love. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you. I wake up every morning and think okay is it taped or do I have to go there? <laughs> so you're not always there when we hear you. No, no. I'm yeah. there I'm there three days a week. Yeah, yeah. Physically. Okay but so anyway so it's your collection then yes. do you bring it in and plan ahead what you're going yes, to play? Yes exactly, yes. You don't leave it there under lock somewhere. Uh, well, some of it's there in the studio. Uh, mm -hmm. We trust people, and people have not touched it. We've been there a year, and it's been fine. But uh, so, how big is your collection? Probably. The answer is I don't know. But if you ask me to guess, I'd say eight or nine hundred CDs, I would, something like that. Yeah. And did you have them all converted to CD? I'm sure you started with albums. Uh, I yes. Uh, fortunately, as the years have gone by, the record companies have opened their vaults. A lot of that material is available again. So yeah. some of it I had transferred privately, mm -hmm. but uh, the majority of it I, I, I got as the yeah. years went by. Well, I, you know, there are those that say that the albums, the original, is a lot clearer, better quality. There's the a sound. warmth, Gloria, to the uh -huh. albums. Uh -huh. um, it's it's technically known as analog sound, and it was created by running tape over tape heads through warm tubes. You know, that's how it's created. And digital is very brittle, very brittle. You've only got to go to the Mary Pickford, and the curtains open, and that trailer comes on, and you're pushed back into your seat by that digital sound. Yeah. Uh, analog is much warmer, much warmer. And I can understand some people prefer it. Well, uh, we were discussing, going to the classics, Caruso. Okay. And my mother had Caruso recordings, which of course I inherited he, and have. He launched the record business. How interesting. Yeah, it was on the back of RCA Victor, certainly. It was on the back of Caruso. That, that is very interesting, which just shows you how the world has changed. Yes. That the classics were the, the biggest sellers. Yes. And now they're like 5% of the business. But but I'm glad that the Grammys are given for classic Oh, yeah, music they're given still. in every category spoken word, book. Um, you know, everything. Yeah, right. Okay, the, the Sinatra sound. In fact, there is a show on KWXY that's yes, just Sinatra. Sid Mark hosts it, yeah. Right, and you play that a lot, too. Mm -hmm. And how do you account with all the modern music that's come in, the lasting of these wonderful recordings? And, and the fact that KWXY did win the rating for AM yes. proves how many people want to hear that sound. Uh, it's true. Yeah. And I don't think the rest of America has cottoned on to it yet, because uh, there, if logically there should be in every market a, a station yes. which would play Sinatra, Fitzgerald, and Joe Beam, and Johnny Mathis, and so on and so forth, and there isn't, because people don't think they can make money on it, you know, so they all chase the same rabbit, you know, <laughs> they're chasing the 14 through 24s or whatever, and... Uh, these, fo these other formats work if they're done properly. And if, if you have to have a respect for the music and you have to have certain loyalty about it. Well, you're, you're, the interesting thing about your show is you don't just play it. Very often you have a tale to tell ah. about the making of the recording. And they, they are things that are not necessarily uh, read in books or magazine stories that you seem to know. Well, I. I remember when I was a kid in England, we had a wind-up gramophone, you know, and <laughs> I would study the different labels and things. So this was way back when. Yeah. Uh, I've always been fascinated by it. Uh, yeah. I like to know how things got to be the way they are. How, how did this woman come to go into the studio to do this at this time in her career? Yeah. And at first, I used to be reticent to share all that, and someone said, no, no, no. It's the stories that really we want to hear. So. People love it. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay. Well, I, I'm glad we got to talk to you because um, Don's on. <laughs> <laughs> Gloria, it's so nice to the spend gra- time with you. The Grammy you. winner plays the Grammy winners. Oh. But I do want to ask something else. In talking about the music of the past, the great American songbook, yes. and, and those artists who sang the songs so beautifully, and the great composers that wrote not only wonderful music, but great lyrics. Um, Cyrus Radio, am I pronouncing it? You've got two radio stations that you can get that you have to pay extra for. Who come down via satellite. Yeah, not AM, not FM, and you've got stations that absolutely just delve into that. There is a Frank Sinatra channel plays not only Frank, but as you do, Ella Fitzgerald, Sarah Mm -hmm. Vaughan. Right. Lady Day. Oh, what a <laughs> remark. What, a, yeah. what an artist. I recently rediscovered her, the heartbreak in that voice. She well, she had, had a heartbreaking life. Yes, she did indeed. She yeah. did indeed. Yeah. Uh, oh. Well, it, it, it's just wonderful to, to, I, to know I'd just that like what, to say one thing to you keep about... Keep going. About, I think we have more time. Oh. I thought we would, didn't, but we do. Okay. <laughs> I, about the great American composers, the Gershwins and the Berlins and what have you, they, they weren't born in this country. So they, they're in Russia, for example, in mm-hmm. the main, and mm-hmm. they came, and English was not their first language, so they had to learn it. And then they had to learn how to write in idiom. So isn't it a lovely day to be caught in the rain? This is coming out of someone who came from Russia, which yeah. makes it to me, doubly wondrous. You yeah, know, they, they yeah. weren't born in Cincinnati. Well, you know something else, we, and we talked about this on your radio show when I was on about two years ago. Um, Frederick Lowe. Exactly. German. Yes. And they say he's Viennese, but he spent more time, I think, in Berlin. Uh, but, I mean, here he wrote, what was the great Western uh, show? Paint Your Wagon. With Wandering Star. Yeah, now he was star, certainly yeah. not around in the Old West, nor no. did he ever go to Scotland. Brigadier. No, he didn't. Never, never told me that. And wow. yet they, they have this imagination and this great creative whatever it is yes. within. Can you imagine us moving to Germany and then writing a hit musical? I mean, how hard that would no. be. <laughs> I couldn't. But you know what? I couldn't do it here. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's true. And I never really thought about that. And yeah. They were not natives. And Berlin. And look, I was just going to say Berlin. F- shaped the country with White Christmas. Yeah. Alexander's Ragtime Band, Easter Parade. These were anthems that shaped America. America owes a great debt to Berlin. I, I agree. I was asked to his 100th birthday party, and I went, but he didn't come. Oh, how, what a shame. He stayed but he, home he was with a soft-boiled to. egg. <laughs> yes. Isn't that funny? But I understand he used to talk to people on the phone, yes, his he friends. Did. He was constantly on the phone, is well, what I was I told. I never spoke to him. But no, well, I didn't either, but I was told this by people who didn't know him. He would do that. And I mean, when he was 100. Wow, wow. So, anyway, it's, it's, it's interesting. And you are keeping that music alive right here. Well. And, and around the world. Around the world. Yeah, kwxy.com. Listeners in Paris. And yes, now you said you've got, got Perth, comments. Western Australia. Yeah. Paris, uh, London, Tel Aviv. Uh, every time that show goes on, I get emails from them. Great. Okay, well, Thank maybe you. our viewers will email. We, we hope so. And you can listen to KWXY if you are in the Palm Springs area. You can turn it on your radio, but you don't have to be anywhere in the world. KWXY.com. Correct. You have to do www first to get it? Yes, you do. Okay, yes, and, and you then do. you'll hear it. Yes. And I do listen to it a lot. I'll write columns and listen. <laughs> thank you for inviting me. And I want to thank all of you for being here and hope that you will be with us the next time. And you can follow this show and tell your friends, if they've missed it, that they can watch us on demand, your local station, your local Time Warner on demand, and then you can see it any day, any time, 24-7, as they say, morning, afternoon, night, 3 in the morning if you are moved to do so. So go to your local on-demand station. And I've got about six shows there, including this one. So I think you will enjoy that. I hope you will. You can also follow me on Twitter, where I am Smallscribe, and on Facebook. And you can be a friend on Facebook. Or you can go to facebook.com slash Gloria Greer PS and say that you like it. And then we can correspond that way on Facebook. And it's a lot of fun to do that. So I hope that you will, or go to my website, and then you can keep track of whatever shows I have on the air and who, who you can listen to and watch. So I keep that up to date. Anyway, 
fun being with you, fun having Don Wardell, Thank and you. I hope you'll be back with me next time.